Hey, what's up guys? It's Fruity. We're back with episode 11 of Let's Play Crash Bandicoot. The no slash minimal spin run in the previous episode. I took on Castle Machinery and got a gem there with absolutely no troubles. Beat Dr. Nitrous Brio, the penultimate boss of the game, and got ourselves oh, the Sherbet Lemon Gem from the lab. And I actually did have trouble with that, but that was just me not being able to beat the level. Uh, there wasn't actually any four spins there or anything, so yep. In this episode, we'll be taking on the Great Hall. My goodness, this level's gonna be so hard, I can tell you that right now. This is the hardest level in the whole bloody game. Like, like I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, right now, it is the hardest level. Like, it, it, it follows on from the lab, having the old uh, little castle aesthetic and stuff, but oh my goodness, like... As you can see, it is the freaking hardest level in the whole game. Um, yep. <laughs> yep, the end is right there. No fooling. Can Oh, you can die by running back there. Well, I died in the Great Hall. I'm so proud of myself. Um, so yes, as you can see, it is a clear gem path. This is how you get the 100% end of the game. If you get all clear gems, which requires both keys and all colored gems as well, then you can go along here. For a secret ending, but as you can see, I don't have them all. Oh wow, and I just realized that some of these gems must be specific. It isn't just like, you know, if you have like eight gems and the first eight platforms are there, because you can see this one isn't there, whereas the other two are, which is interesting, but I don't think I have all five of the first clear gems, so I don't know why all five of these are here. That's a little weird. Maybe the first five are non-specific, and then the last 15 are? No, because if the last 15 is specific, then these ones would have to be the correct ones. That's very weird. Anyway, this level looks really cool. It's sort of like a lights out aesthetic, except um, obviously it isn't dark. You know, we've got those wooden um, pillars up there. What are they called? Oh, like support beams, I guess. And you got these cool looking columns here. They've got spikes on them, a bit like the ones in the lab. you got... A balcony out there and you can get some much cooler views here I was talking about the views from the lab the views from here are a bit better you can see a nice starry sky with clouds you can see the side of the castle out there it, it looks great this level honestly looks fantastic I wish we could have gotten like a, a like a fully fledged proper level that looked um, as cool as this because it really is combining the aesthetic of lights out with the um, carpets and everything uh, the lab with the pillars, and Slippery Climb with the sort of outdoorsy castle wall type look. But yeah, it's a cool level that sadly doesn't really have too much to it. But yes, that is how we're going to get our 100% ending once we uh, have all the gems. So there are uh, 6 color gems and 20 clear gems. Um, obviously the 20 clear gems you need to complete that path in the Great Hall, and you'll need both keys as well for that. Uh, incidentally, since um, you don't actually need the green gem to get um, all the clear gems, you can actually get the 100% ending without the green gem. It's the, the one gem you don't need. You need all the other colored gems because there are certain... Um, well, basically the green gem is only needed for one clear gem in Jungle Rollers, and there is a way of skipping that. So it is possible to get the 100% ending without the green gem, but all the other colored gems are absolutely needed. Uh, so yeah... And here's the final boss, Dr. Neo Cortex. But we won't be taking on him first, actually. I said I was going to get as many gems as I possibly could without doing any extra spins before I defeated Cortex. And so I'm going to test now the levels with the yellow gem route, since I have the yellow gem now. So, speaking of Lights Out, in reference to the Great Hall, here we are back in Lights Out. Checking to see if I can get the gem here. I'm pretty sure I will be able to. I know that the three boxes in the yellow gem route are a box stack, but I'm pretty sure that you can jump on the scenery to get on them. And if you can't, well then I'm just wasting your time, but hey, whatever. We'll see what happens. This, it's not too long of a level anyway, so it's not going to be much of a time waste if that ends up being the case. But uh, yeah, fancy that, the green gem. You know, not only is it the only one you get in the speedrun because it gives you a shortcut through castle machinery, it's also the only one you technically don't need for that 100% ending. The green gem's definitely got it, got it on. There are some other interesting properties the green gem has. Um, like, it's in a different level in the Japanese version. Uh, <laughs> I guess I'll explain that now since we've got a bit of a, a, you know, me not doing anything new or fresh. 
But anyways, um, in the Japanese version, for starters, Slippery Climb and Sunset Vista switched around. Like, they actually are. Which I find ironic. It's like, you know, Sunset Vista's too hard for about halfway through the game. But you switch it with Slippery Climb, another notoriously difficult level. However, they put more checkpoints in Akawaku Mask and Slippery Climb, so it is actually a fair bit easier. Um, here's the Yellow Gem route. It's pretty cool. It takes up this tower. You got a picture of Cortex there. This is a very cool looking gem route. So yeah, this is the box stack. Now I think... Oh, an alternate exit, of course. Now I, I think... Can we jump on the scenery? I feel... Oh no, maybe we can't. This might be a forced spin. Hmm. I can sort of briefly stand up here. I feel like this is doable. I feel like it's doable. Hmm. Oh wait, I was standing like right up the top there. Look at that, I'm right up there. But it's not letting me jump back quickly enough. I'm like stuck on something. This is odd. It's very odd. Whoa, what the? Oh my god, you can actually die up there? Oh my goodness, I never do this. This is actually hilarious. Oh my goodness. Oh. So uh, now that we're getting closer to the Yellow Gem route, I'll explain the rest of the differences in the Japanese version. As well as Slippery Climb being in Sunset Vista's place, it also no longer has a colored gem, it no longer has the red gem. The red gem has actually moved to the Lost City, which of course has the green gem in this version. Making the Lost City like the only level in the series, which can claim to have had two colored gems because of different versions, which is interesting. And then the green gem from the Lost City is moved to Hog Wild, actually. Bit of a weird level to have a colored gem. Um, yeah, so green gem, uh, the green and red gem are moved around. Basically, the red gem moved from Slippery Climb to the Lost City. The Lost City's green gem moved to Hog Wild, and Hog Wild's clear gem moved to Slippery Climb. It's all like one big triangle there. There is also some other differences, like there's some Torna bonuses that are removed. Like certain levels don't have Torna bonuses and ones that don't, and don't have them in the NTSC and PAL versions do. Like Temple Ruins has a Torna bonus in the Japanese version, and it's uh, completely unique. It isn't present in um, the NTSC or PAL releases. So I'll probably show that off in a bonus video. I'll show off all the Japanese exclusive bonus rounds. And of course that means there are also a few bonus rounds that are in the NTSC and PAL versions that are cut in the Japanese version. I, at least I believe. There, I think there's a couple. I think in total though, there might be one or two more Torna bonuses in the Japanese version. I think they they add more than they cut, I'm pretty sure. Now, I'm really not sure about this box stack. It's pissing me off. Um, hmm. I still can't believe you can actually die up here, for one thing. I do have another... I oh, no, there it is. My other idea was to try and stand on the edge of the end of level portal um, without actually ending the level. Because you can do that. I'll see if I can do it here. See? Oh, okay, no, I apparently not. <laughs> well, you can stand on it for a couple of frames without ending the level anyways. So yeah, I managed to get that box stack in the end. I'm happy I didn't have to spin for that. That would have been unfortunate. But hey, oh my goodness, it's another color gem. The purple gem. Yes, lights out. Contains the purple gem. It requires the yellow gem, as we saw it was a yellow gem route. The purple gem is the only color gem which requires another color gem. And in fact, it's the only color gem in the entire Crash franchise which requires another color gem to get. In later games, they scrap that idea. You don't need, um... There aren't any color gems on color gem routes in later Crash games, is what I'm trying to say here. So this is a rather interesting, unique thing they did here with the lights out. But, to be honest, slightly dull level to have done it in. Because, again, like, that's quite easy. I mean, you know, you know, whatever. But the tower, the yellow gem root tower is very cool looking. So many of the gem roots in this game, you can tell they put a lot of effort into trying to, trying to make them aesthetically interesting. Right? Just so many of the gem roots in this game are beautiful. Um, you'll see, you know, like, when we do native fortresses, red gem root, that one's beautiful. Um, the purple gem root in Boulder Dash, be beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. But there's a purple gem immediately adjacent to the red gem. Kind of a, a weird quirk, because Slippery Climb is like Cortex's castle exterior. Lights Out is like Cortex's castle interior in the dark 
um, less technological corridor, and the lab is Cortex's castle interior in like the technological castle corridor, and all three of those levels have colored gems. It's like the castle aesthetic just loves its colored gems. Mm -mm, I love my colored gems too. Mm -mm, delicious colored gems. Absolutely beautiful. They they look so pretty, so pretty. I do, I do, I do adore my colored gems though. You can't, you can't come between me and my colored gems. There's a lost city here. We'll, we'll tell you. Um, anyways, there are two levels of the yellow gem route. Lights out being one of them, leading to the purple gem, of course. And the other one is all the way back in the Great Gate. Fancy that, having to get the gem from the last regular level of the game to get the clear gem in the third level of the game. Um. Oh no, I just realized something. I can't get this gem. What am I doing? Because I have four spins, I'm gonna have to spin those things in order to uh, ascend up the um, the wall. Yeah, what am I doing? I, I can't do this yet. Nevertheless, here's the Great Gate again if you missed it. I huh, haven't seen it since like episode one, so yeah, that's that. At least it gave me time to explain where the yellow gem roots are and everything, you know, all that, all that stuff, all that good stuff. Um, I, I did mention it before, but you actually don't need the yellow gem to get the clear gem in the Great Gate. There is a skip you can do, like Jungle Rollers, and I will show that off in an extras video, along with uh, the Japanese differences. I I'm gonna have, like, two extras videos. One where I play a couple of very special levels that aren't in the final game, which, um is going to be very interesting. And then the other one where I show off uh, differences between um, the NTSC and PAL versions of the game and the Japanese version of the game. And in inside that video, I will also have those um, jungle rollers and great gate skips as well. But anyways, it's time to finish the game, my friends. Time to finish um, the game any percent. Uh, I did save, yeah. I finished the Tawana bonus at the lab. I, I saved the gems, yeah. Because um, you get booted back to the title screen after beating the final boss, so I'm just hoping I have all my progress saved right now, which I do, which is um, quite lucky. Anyways, this is probably the most epic final boss fight in the history of video games, <laughs> for me, anyway. It's not hard at all, it's actually easy. Um, again, Koala Kong is the hardest boss in the game, I stand by that. But um, this boss is so epic, because we're on like a freaking blimp. Like, circling Cortex's castle, which is now on frickin' fire. Um, the story behind that is that when we defeated Brio, some chemicals were supposed to have been dropped, which set the tower on fire. Not exactly evidence, but hey, whatever. And look at that, that beautiful sunset background over the ocean. You can see the other two islands as well. Um, it's just, ah, oh, it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful beautiful boss fight, and he's on a freaking hoverboard shooting at us. Uh, unfortunately, I will have to spin during this boss many, many times, because I do not believe you can jump on the, the green ones. What you're supposed to do is spin the green bullets back at him, or green laser shots, or whatever you want to call it. But I don't believe I can jump on them. Let's see. No, I don't think it's going to work. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to kill myself, um, so I can get my Aku Aku's back, and we're going to have to spin... Um, oh how many times? I think we've one, two, three, four, five. I think we'll have to spin nine times total during this uh, boss, which is a bit of a shame, but hey. There's one. I also love Cortex's laugh. He's just constantly doing his evil laugh. It's pretty funny. The, a laugh is funny. <laughs> That's good. That's ironic. And with each hit point, we have to hit more of the green things back at him. So we had to hit one the first time, two the second time, and three this third time. However, it actually reduces after that, funnily enough. It's sort of like a downhill slope. It's like a... Some kind of wave. So, two... Three. Oh, I got hit. But now we only have to hit him twice. So, yeah, it's easier. But he shoots really fast now. Oh, There's another spin. Eh, there we go. Only one hit left. Can we do it? Can we do it? Hardest phase. Yes, we can do it. And... I love that death, that death uh, scream. It's such, uh, I just love my Disney deaths. <laughs> you know, the classic Disney death, villain falls to his death, that, that's, a, that's a trope, you know. <laughs> and I, I just love it, how his jet board explodes and he falls like 200 meters to his death or something. Okay, he's not actually dead, he comes back in the later Crash games. <laughs> but I don't know how he survives the fall, okay? Like, you even see it in Crash 2, somehow he survives it, I don't know. But it's still epic and... Oh, it'd be so cool if that's how he actually died, if that's how Cortex died. <laughs> it would 
such an epic death. But uh, yeah, that's it. We rescued Torna. She gave us a nice big hug. My goodness, she is so much taller than us. And uh, we ride off into the sunset on a freaking airship. Oh my good. In the, the epicness. Mm. Crash 2 and 3 cannot compare with the epicness of the ending in this game. Just the overall vibe. Uh, the vibe, progression, story, and setup, atmosphere of this game. It's the best Crash game when it comes to just, just that. The atmosphere and progression and, and the, the final boss and the ending and. and Okay, maybe Crash 2 and 3 go a little more in-depth into the endings with, like, actual dialogue and stuff. But you can't compare to fighting a mad scientist on a freaking floating jet board 200 meters in the air on an airship circling a freaking burning laboratory castle with two other islands in the distance and a freaking sunset background to top the whole thing off. You don't beat that. You don't beat it! Okay, I think I just lost my mind. Um... <clears throat> need to calm down. Anyways, so yes, that's the game. <laughs> it's not finished yet though, not by any means, my friends. That is just the any percent ending. We still have like 15 gems left to collect. And that is all gonna be fantastic. We have uh, four of the six color gems now. So we can do a lot of the gem routes at, at this present moment in time. But yeah, there you go. It takes you back to the title screen and after credits are over. Crash Bandicoot. Um, so yeah, I should have my save game in here. Let's just have a quick see. Ah, uh, 79%, 29 level, 1 out of 2, 11 out of 26 gems. There we go, loading the game. Should take me to the lab. Um, yeah, so as you can see, um, the Great Hall and Cortex are no longer unlocked. But when you get 100%, they automatically unlock. Like, it's kind of weird. You can only save up to the beginning of the lab. Um, but then once you get 100%, it just unlocks the Great Hall and Cortex for you automatically, which is uh, pretty interesting. Although it'll still save your gem in the lab, of course. So I still have my beautiful Sherbet Lemon gem there. Um, and if to be honest, that's all that's really important, because the lab is the final regular level of the game, so when it comes to getting 100%, you really only need to have up to the lab unlocked. It's like, it doesn't really matter, and then once you get 100%, you can go to the Great Hall for your ending. Um, but, um, yeah. Whew. That was quite a rush. Oh, oh, what am I gonna do? Ah, uh, you know, just to end off the episode, I might as well show you. If you, uh, press square, you can actually rotate around the island. I never knew this for years, like, I, I literally only found out about this, like, last year, and it blew my mind, because I always wanted to get, like, better looks at certain parts of the models of these islands, and, you know, I didn't realize you could do this to get a better look at stuff, so, like, if, if you had told me two years ago that I could have the camera angle here and see the lab and the yellow gem in the top left corner, it would have freaking blew my freaking mind, like, I would have gone nuts, um... And it's pretty cool because if you rotate it like all the way here and then you move to a different level, it has to rotate all the way back around again before you can do it. It's pretty funny. Um, I guess I'll show that off on the other islands as well. Let's head back to Isle 2, Wumper Island. And, uh, yeah, there you go. You can rotate around. Obviously, rotating around the first two islands isn't as interesting as the third island because the third island, the camera actually shifts vertically because it has to take you up Cortex's tower. Huh, back to Native Fortress, and uh, yeah, there you go, rotating round. Except nice little easter egg for you. I guess that means next time, I don't even know what we're going to be doing next time. I guess I have a free choice really, I guess we could do the, yeah, I guess we might as well just go in order through levels. I guess the Great Gate will be next. Yeah, that sounds like an interesting thing to do next time. Alright, I'll catch you guys next time for when we start going for 100% completion. And I'm um, quite curious to see how many spins it takes to uh, beat Cortex, and then, if, you know, when I do this in editing, I'll see what that number is, and then uh, also how many will need to 100% the game. Now, anyway, I've been rambling on long enough. This is Fruity signing off.